In part one of the first lecture, we are going to look at the digital revolution, changes to modern life brought about not just by computers, but by the internet as well. The term digital revolution refers to the changes that we have all seen in politics and in the economy by computer technology in general and by the internet in particular. It has also changed how we have socialized. We use the computer to socialize via Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and other social media platforms. We don't write letters so much anymore. We send electronic mail, and we are as likely to text friends and family as to call on the telephone. And in many cases, we use Skype and Google Hangouts instead of a traditional phone call. At the heart of these changes is digital electronics, which uses electronic circuits to represent data. We will talk a bit more about how data is represented in part two of this lecture. The devices that are included as digital electronics include computers, small media players such as iPods, digital cameras and camcorders, cell phones, radios and television, GPS services, DVD and CD players, ebook players, digital voice recorders, and even arcade games. The graph that you see shows how popular computers have become in American households. In 1975, the year when the first small computer, the MITS Altair, first appeared on the cover of Popular Electronics, there were close to zero households with computers. It wasn't until 1984 that there were 10 million households with a computer. But by 2003, there were over 60 million households with computers. For close to two decades, this growth in home computers happened with very few home computers becoming part of a network. This changed quickly after the passage of the National Information Superhighway Infrastructure Act, which expanded and commercialized the Internet. The first application to become popular on the newly expanded Internet was electronic mail, or email. This was followed by bulletin board services and chat groups. MySpace was founded in 2003 and quickly became the most popular social network before it was surpassed by Facebook in 2008. Before we can continue, we need to define a few terms. A computer network is a group of computers linked by wired or wireless technology, so its data and resources can be shared. These resources include not just data, but printers and other devices. It can even include access to other networks. The largest service on the Internet is the World Wide Web. It is a collection of documents, graphics, and sounds that can be accessed over the Internet. As we will see later in the course, there are several technologies that allow the Web to do what it does. These include hypertext markup language, or HTML, and cascading style sheets. We will talk about these and others later in the course. Cyberspace is a little harder to define. The term refers to entities that largely exist within computer networks and not the real world. Lastly, digitization refers to how we convert text numbers, sound, photos, videos into the kind of data that we can store on a computer and that we can process. For a very long time, any data that I needed to access was either stored on my computer's hard disk or on secondary storage media, like floppy disks or thumb drive. That included not just data, but also the software that I used. This has largely changed over the past decade. A great deal of data is now stored on network devices, many of which are local and some of which are not. When network architects diagram a network and wish to indicate storage devices that could be local or could be anywhere, 
they usually use a puffy cloud to indicate this kind of storage. This is now commonly used to indicate storage capabilities about which the user does not necessarily know much. These may be local or they may be managed by some facility a distance from a user's computer and they may be owned and operated by another company. Examples of cloud computing can be storage services like Dropbox or software that you can access over the Internet, such as Google Docs. As little as 10 years ago, it was fairly common for someone to have a cell phone that they used for personal purposes. A smartphone like a Blackberry that they used for email and business phone calls. An iPod for listening to music. And a point and click camera. It is fairly common now to find all these functions on a smartphone such as an iPhone or an Android phone. It is much more convenient and many of these features can work very well together. This is what we mean by technology convergence. We have become a digital society to a large extent, using our cell phones and tablets to interact with friends on Facebook, Twitter, and other social media sites. And these technologies do not necessarily respect cultural or national boundaries. It has allowed people to maintain their privacy in many cases. There are anonymous internet sites such as Freenet, and there have been anonymizer tools that allow a user to remain anonymous even as they post on bulletin boards and social media, as they send email, and as they chat. This is very helpful in places where there can be reprisals for speaking one's mind. In society like ours, we take freedom of speech for granted. This is not the case in many countries. We also have an expectation of privacy. This is frequently compromised in our digital society. It has also become common for intellectual property rights to be compromised. The term intellectual property refers to anything we have invented or created. The most common forms of intellectual property rights that have been infringed upon is copyrighted text, software, and music. We will talk more about this later in the course. Is the World Wide Web really dead? I highly doubt it, but it is being transformed. Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and Google Apps have changed how people use the Internet. Social media refers to cloud-based applications that are designed for social interaction and consumer-generated content. And this refers to Facebook, Twitter, and similar sites. Over the past decade, end-user computing, what we do on our computers, has changed. Data processing is no longer one of the primary uses of computers. While we may own personal computers and they may be attached to local area networks, we are looking more and more at the possibilities of cloud computing. Our desktop and laptop computers are giving way to smartphones and tablets. We are still using standalone applications and software suites, but we are using more and more apps on our handheld devices or that we access from the cloud. Internet access is no longer a dial-up connection using our landline telephones and is less commonly using cable and satellite access to the Internet, but increasingly over 4G and Wi-Fi.